Welcome back to another episode of Deep in the Heart of Longhorn Sports, your home for news, game recaps, and analysis for all things Texas Longhorn Sports. However, in this video, we are not talking about the Texas Longhorns. We are talking about Kansas basketball, coached by Bill Self. We will preview everything Kansas basketball for the upcoming college basketball season, which tips off on Monday. Yes, we are back into the groove of things with college basketball. Welcome back, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoy this video. If you do, make sure you like and subscribe. If you like this content, share it with your friends. We greatly appreciate it. Joining me tonight, as always, is my fantastic co-host, Mr. Emmy Nixon. Emmy, how are you? And are you excited for college basketball season? Yeah, man. I, uh, my, you know, the amount of college basketball I watch throughout the year wavers a little, but I mean, at the start of the year, there's always a lot of excitement, and this year especially, because there's a lot of really good teams. And um, like I said last episode, the transfer portal makes it a fucking free-for-all with a lot more teams in, in the mix. Yes, it does. Um, so, let's start by by saying this. Kansas possibly returns the best big three in America with point guard Dewan Harris coming back. Um, KJ Adams, the Austin product coming back and Hunter Dickinson coming back for another year of college basketball. So when it comes to those three players returning, the returning core for this Kansas basketball team, um, what are you watching for uh, from that group specifically going into this season? What are you most excited? I'm watching. I'm watching for the chemistry part of it. I think uh, last year, in the times I watched Kansas, when they were healthy, of course, it felt a bit clunky. It really did. I think with Hunter Dickinson and his style of play, he likes to you know kind of <laughs> operate in the high post and the low post and kind of bog down the game a little bit. And he and give him credit, he's kind of you know adapted with his new team as well. He's uh, getting out and running a little bit more and, and shooting the three ball as well. But uh, I think with Dwan Harris and KJ Adams, you kind of already know what they're going to give you. They've been in this program for years on end. But in the second year with Hunter Dickinson in the fold, I'd like to see them be able to incorporate him in the mix offensively a little bit um, and not just, you know, the occasional, you know, catch and shoot three. Like I think incorporating him in just like pick and pop scenarios and, and, you know, if they're running split action, having him be the screener and having his gravity be important factor there. Um, just just the chemistry. Like, that's the main part that I'm watching for. Yeah, I think it's interesting, the career arc of 100 Dickinson, who played his first three seasons at, at Michigan, and after three seasons, transfers to Kansas last year, and was a very good player for Kansas. One of the best bigs right. in America, bottom line, averaging 18 and 11. Um <laughs> But at this point in his career, there's 127 games worth of college tape on him at this point. Um, now, no amount of college tape or scouting in general is going to make it easy to stop a seven-footer with the skills offensively that Hunter Dickinson has, his ability to dominate on the interior while also stretching the floor at points in times and knocking down some perimeter shots. Um, but there there are areas that both Kansas needs to do a better job of hiding and Hunter Dickinson needs to improve upon going into this season. If if they want to win a national championship, defensively there are some limitations because of his, I would call it average mobility, um, but that's unlikely to change. That's on the defense as a whole to kind of mask when he's on the floor, and I think with K.J. Adams there right beside him, 
or a Flory Budinga, a, a freshman forward that they could also play alongside him who will get some rotational minutes, who's kind of a long arm stretch four kind of player who rebounds uh, and plays really good defense or is kind of that high energy on ball defender. Like there are a lot of good defenders around Hunter Dickinson. So they can play team defense that kind of masks those deficiencies defensively for Hunter Dickinson. But the one area I want to see him kind of improve upon a little bit going into this season is where he is at, at the free throw line. Getting to the free throw line, but also knocking down free throw shots at a better clip. It feels like with his skills offensively, he should be a better um, free throw shooter at this point in his career. He shot a career worst 62.4% from the stripe a year ago, down 10 percentage points from his previous worst at Michigan. So he's actually declined at the free throw line uh, throughout his career. I think that needs to get better because. Obviously, um, one of the one of Kansas's issues last year was the fact that they suffered a lot of injuries late. So it basically took them from a four man team to a two man team. Hunter Dickinson suffered a dislocated shoulder um, late in the season that didn't help, and then obviously uh, after like the first month of the season, Kevin McCuller, who was their best player for that first month of the season, uh dealt with a ton of different injuries and really couldn't play at a healthy level in the tournament, which took a team that was already short on depth and scoring and shooting down to basically a two-man team between Dewan Harris, who doesn't do a lot of scoring, and a less than healthy and effective Hunter Dickinson, which is the reason why Kansas ultimately lost last year uh, once the book kind of was out on Johnny Furphy. Um, who I think at this point is also in the NBA. So I think right. of those three, Hunter Dickinson um, is the player that I'm watching closely. Obviously, we know about DeWan Harris. He's going to be the the point guard of this team. He's going to run the offense. He's going to distribute. He's going to be good in the pick and roll. Any scoring that DeWan Harris generates for this Kansas team offensively this year is just going to be an added bonus because I do think they went out in the transfer portal and they added two shooters and a a guy who can who can create his own shot and initiate offense like a secondary ball handler of sorts in AJ Store, a transfer from Wisconsin. And in doing that, they not only improve their depth, but they improve uh, their shooting and their floor spacing. Those were the two biggest flaws from Kansas a year ago. So from that perspective, I give them an A in the transfer portal department um, for this upcoming season. Um, but between Zeke Mayo, Rylan Griffin, the, the transfer from Alabama, who was on last year's Final Four team, and um, A.J. Store, um, what do you think overall about the job that Bill Self did in the transfer portal? Yeah, I mean, I'm right there with you. I think um, this team needed ball handling um, and just, I think, just more glue guys on offense, if that makes sense. Just guys that I think are able or have the IQ to be able to keep the offense flowing when the ball goes to them. Uh, and that's what they brought in, I think. And just bringing an experience through the transfer portal matters a lot. When you when you have the recruiting acumen that Kansas does, you want to supplement that with veterans so that you give those freshmen time to actually grow before they become, like, the main part of the rotation. From, like, from the get-go, it can be, it can be kind of difficult, and there's going to be a lot of growing pains with that. So – Having those veterans in the fold, I think, gives them a lot of flexibility early on, and it's going to help their record because of it. Yeah, I, I, I'm i looking at A.J. Store. Um, with Kevin McCuller and Johnny Furphy departing for the NBA, Kansas really needed to go out and add an offensive playmaker on the wing. And that's exactly what A.J. Store is, 6'7", 210, 215 pounds, 
who had a breakout sophomore year last year at Wisconsin. He began his career at St. John's, where, and then last year, he carried Wisconsin, averaging almost 17 points per game. Um, and given the composition of Kansas's roster, um, it'll be no surprise if he packs a significant scoring punch, in, in addition to what he does as an initiator of offense um, for this Kansas team. Now, he's not a great, hasn't been a great three-point shooter. That's not why Kansas added him. That's why they went out and got Rylan Griffin and Zeke Mayo, the transfer from South Dakota State. His three-point percentage dropped last year from 40% to 32%. Um, I think if he can split the difference between those two percentages for KU and shoot 35% or better from deep, it'll be huge for a team that was terrible basically inept from beyond the arc last year. That was one of their big flaws. They couldn't shoot, and they had no depth. Um, so it would be huge if he can do that. Because when I look at how I project at least this to go, I project DeWan Harris to start at the point guard spot. I project Zeke Mayo to start at the, uh, at the two guard, the transfer from South Dakota State. I project A.J. Store to start at the three even though we're really playing positionless basketball, mostly in this era of college basketball. K.J. Adams at the four, and then Hunter Dickinson at the five. But with that lineup, you're really only ha you really only have, at this point, two real shooters on the floor. If you get what you get, what you got last year from both Dewan Harris and A.J. Storr from a three-point perspective, the only real shooters you have in that lineup are Hunter Dickinson and Zeke Mayo. And my only question with Kansas in this rotation is, how much floor spacing can you really have on the floor at one time? Um, so it's really important for A.J. Store to, I think, shoot a little better than he did from three last year. Now, having said all that, they did go out and they added what they needed to. They got Rylan Griffin, who's another wing, who I think they'll bring off the bench. But they could even throw him in and play some small ball. Uh, he played a pivotal role for Alabama last year. Um, if you remember in that Final Four run, he averaged 13 points on 48% shooting. And the Crimson Tide's five NCAA tournament games. Um so I think from that standpoint, and then also going out and adding Zeke Mayo, a 6'4 combo guard, who was the best player in the Summit League last year, winning Summit League Player of the Year, averaging 19 points, 6 rebounds, and 3.5 and assists, um, he's a guy that hit 38.8% of his three-point attempts on heavy volume in his three seasons at South Dakota State. So between Zeke Mayo and Rylan Griffin, you have the spot up shooting that you need, but in that starting rotation, how much of that can you have on the floor at one time? But overall, it is a significant improvement in personnel, and they address the needs of this roster as good as they possibly could by going out and getting really three solid players in the transfer portal. Um, so between the transfers and the returning talent, you're looking at a really dangerous team just from that standpoint i think one of my x factors for kansas is going to be number one what did they get from their, their highly touted freshman flory budinga a 6'9 225 pound freshman who was ranked as the number 14 overall prospect in this year's um top 24 7 rankings for the class of 2024 he's a mcdonald's all-american He's going to be a guy who provides great length athleticism. He's kind of a hybrid, I think. At his best, he could be a hybrid between Hunter Dickinson and K.J. Adams. He's a little taller, a little bit more lengthy than K.J. Adams. But he doesn't have the skill necessarily offensively yet of Hunter Dickinson. But I think his development will be key because he's going to be asked to play a pretty big role during his during this season, right? I think they'll deploy him in some small ball lineups next to KJ Adams, um, or they'll they'll play him next to Hunter Dickinson in place of KJ Adams. Um, and then what do they get from the backup point guard spot? Um, 
They bring in Shaquille Moore uh, from Mississippi State, who's an underrated addition in the transfer portal. But to start the season, he's going to be very limited because of um, a foot surgery he had a little over a month ago. Um, but he can also provide some four spacing for them. Shot 36% last year for the Bulldogs. So I think... His addition will raise Kansas's ceiling if he's healthy. I think they improved from a shooting standpoint significantly. I think they improved from a depth standpoint as much as they could. And this is a Kansas team that I would rank probably 1B next to Kansas, next to Alabama's 1A going into the season with UConn at number three. That's how I would do my rankings currently. Um, and now that we've previewed all three teams, like, um, I think it's important to note how they stack up. I think the ex the expectation for Kansas is that they win the Big 12 or at least compete for the Big 12 championship. They get a top two seed in the tournament and they make a run deep into the tournament and compete for a national championship. It's basically as simple as that. Do you have anything that you want to add to all of that? What do I want to add? Um, yeah, just in terms from an expectation standpoint for Kansas this year. Yeah, I think that, um, it's good that they added a lot of bigger guards, um, to this roster. Cause as we know, yep. they like to play fast. Uh, they like to get out and run and transition and, um, they have strong guards that can kind of like guard wing players. Um, like AJ Snore, he's a shooting guard, but he's six seven, so he's gonna guard up. Um, so guys like that, I think it's gonna give them more versatility defensively, and I think they're gonna have an easier time plugging up some of those holes created by Hunter Dick Dickinson's mobility. Um, I think the perimeter size and um, speed to be able to close out. On, on shooters is going to show up for them. Right. So that, that, that's basically it. Like if you're Kansas, you go out with all this new inflection of talent, experienced talent at that with a returning core. That's as good as any returning core in America. And you go out with improved depth and improved shooting and Zeke Mayo and Rylan Griffin, along with another secondary shot creator in AJ Store. And as long as this team, knock on wood, stays healthy, um, I think this is a Bill Self team that will look like vintage Bill Self teams. They're going to play fast. They're going to shoot well. They're going to defend well. And they'll, they'll compete not only for the Big 12 championship, but they'll be a final four contender. They'll be in the second week in the tournament at a minimum. I think that's where they need to be. And they need to probably be in the elite eight. It's probably where I put like the minimum expectation for this Kansas team. If they're at full strength and clicking on all cylinders, they're just that talented. Um, and so again, I would, I'd put Alabama as my one a, Kansas as my 1B, although you could flip those two if you really wanted to. And then because Dan Hurley came back, although there are a lot of question marks for UConn going into the season, I'd rank them number three, uh, the defending national champions, because you have to give them their respect for what right. they've accomplished over the past two years. All right, we're right at 20 minutes. Worked out perfectly. Um, thank you guys for listening to this episode college basketball episode of deep in the heart of Longhorn sports. Hopefully you guys are enjoying these team previews. I'll be back with more later on in the week. We'll be back on Thursday with North Carolina and Kentucky. Um, and we will see you then. Um, so make sure you, you like, and subscribe. We greatly appreciate it and share this with your friends who enjoy college basketball. Hook them horns and peace out. Peace.